Damaged Defenders by Sherza. Chapter 61. Darcy and Pepper. So, the last day had not been a fun time at all for anybody. Darcy was actually kind of happy she'd missed the worst of the explosion. She'd have hated it if she'd accidentally, on purpose, tasered Captain Freaking America because he was having pretty much the definition of world's crappiest day ever and scared her. Really, the entirety of the capes and spandex crowd was... Not happy. Not that Darcy blamed any of them in the least. Hell, she wanted to taser the assholes that had done that to Sergeant Barnes herself. Because those sorts of people, if they could be called people, deserved every scrap of pain and misery that could be doled out to them. She really, really, really didn't envy them when the gang got themselves sorted out and figured out who had done this and where they were. That was going to be pretty much the definition of epic beatdown. The thing was... Right now, a lot of them were anything but okay, which meant that as far as Darcy knew, not a one of them had eaten anything since all hell broke loose. Though it was looking like Xavier had finally gotten Steve to eat, which relieved one worry. The others? Yeah, not so much. Well, Darcy had experience with getting people who didn't want to eat for whatever reason to eat, so she headed for the kitchen after Steve had left it. Jarvis, I need a hand here, Darcy said. Yes, Miss Lewis, Jarvis asked. I want to make some food for everybody, stuff to tempt them to eat, because I don't think any of them except Steve have eaten since this broke loose. And even Steve probably hasn't eaten enough to appease his metabolism. Problem is, I know Jane's favorites like the back of my hand, and have figured out a few for Tony, Loki, and Bruce. But I don't know any of the others' favorite foods yet. I figured you might have a clue that direction. I do indeed. And there was definite relief in Jarvis's voice. Sometimes Darcy wondered about that. He tended to have a lot of emotion in his voice for a computer program, regardless of how well-written a program it might be. Jarvis listed off some possibilities and even provided her with recipes, since she didn't exactly have every recipe she'd ever used memorized. Some of the dishes would have to be ordered from restaurants, though. She was a good enough cook, but some of the favorites were stuff she'd never even heard of before, never mind knew how they should smell slash look, much less tried to cook before. She was all for experimenting and expanding her cooking repertoire, but now was not the time. Jarvix agreed to call the restaurants with the best versions of those recipes, and Darcy rolled up her sleeves to start on the rest. While she was working, she had a thought. Jarvis, has anyone thought to call Pepper? Tony could probably do with her being here, and... Well, sooner or later, word of Sergeant Barnes is going to make it out of the tower, either under a control or otherwise. Might be best to start figuring out how the heck to handle that now rather than later, she said. No, she has not been called. Fortunately, she is currently en route, as she finished the last of her scheduled meetings. I had intended to inform her when she reached the jet, to minimize the potential for unwanted surveillance. Get gal there, Darcy agreed. By the time the food was ready, Pepper was, according to Jarvis, airborne and fully informed. And, Darcy knew, probably mulling over how the heck to handle this mess. Better still, the delectable odors of the food she'd been cooking had succeeded in dragging everyone into the common floor kitchen. Even Steve, though he had a Stark pad with him and was watching a video feed of the quarantine lab. They were all currently gathered around the big table and talking, mostly about Sergeant Barnes in one respect or another, though there was some talk about a team trip to Asgard for training, if Darcy was hearing things right. I just... I wish he was moved. Sit down. Something... Steve said, sounding wrecked. Darcy cocked her head. Has anyone told him he could? She asked, only to find practically everyone staring at her. What? She started, ready to defend her question. I think most of us are kicking ourselves for not thinking of that, Bruce said quietly. We've not exactly been thinking all that clearly. Yeah, that, Tony said, waving his fork in Bruce's direction. Darcy mentally sighed in relief. Hey, you guys may be big heroes, but that doesn't mean you have to think of everything all the time, she pointed out. And it kind of helps that I'm not directly involved. It gives me the chance to think of stuff like that. Miss Lewis, the deliveries have arrived.
Jarvis said, excellent, perfect timing. Darcy said as she pulled the last dish out of the oven. All right, you lot, grab plates and silverware. And so, Elmy, if there is a scrap of food left when you lot are done eating, there will be words. Darcy leveled them all with a flat glare, a glare that doubled in intensity when she noticed a few highly amused looks being exchanged between some of the guys. She huffed and headed for the elevator to grab the restaurant-provided dishes, but she was grinning as she did. If they were able to be amused, at her high-handedness, they weren't too bad off. And that was good news. There were times when Pepper seriously considered the advisability of never letting Tony out of her sight. It seemed like every time she did, oh, hell broke loose. Once upon a time, that had inevitably meant wild parties, crazy stunts, and the predictable paparazzi feeding frenzies that followed. More recently, it attended to mean far uglier things. Tony being kidnapped, explosions, and death, among other unpleasant trees. Of course, every time she started having thoughts along those lines, she'd remember what sticking to Tony at all times would mean. And as much as Pepper loved the man, she didn't think she could handle day plus long creative binges and their attendant heavy metal music at eardrum shattering decibels and complete lack of sleep. She honestly didn't know how Tony managed to deal with those binges. To be completely fair, this latest incident had absolutely nothing to do with Tony, save it had happened while he was in Stark Tower. Pepper truly didn't know what to think of the fact that Sergeant Barnes was... Well, not completely dead! She wouldn't say he was alive, because from what Jarvis had told her, at the moment the body was alive, but the man himself was nowhere to be found. Though the one scrap of good news was that, according to Frigga, he would eventually surface. Pepper was glad both for his sake and for Steve's. The only other bit of good news was that because Tony and the other Avengers were more or less losing their minds, rather understandably, about this, Pepper had his chance to get ahead of them. A cleanup crew was dispatched to Trump Tower to clean up the mess that had been made during the attempt to capture the assassin that had turned out to be Barnes. With a bit of work, any evidence an Avenger had been on site would be removed, leaving people to assume a normal burglary had taken place. That would give them all precious time to deal with Barnes and the Yelena woman before Fury found out. Pepper contacted the legal team and got them started on the whole mess. She wouldn't put it past Fury to try to let Barnes hang out to dry for what he'd been forced to do as the so-called Winter Soldier. Try being the operative word, because in the unlikely event of the SI legal team failing to keep Barnes out of trouble, Steve would definitely have something to say about the matter, and the rest of the Avengers would be right behind him. Next, she called Henry from Public Relations and told him to clear his morning tomorrow and to schedule a meeting with him to talk about his next challenge. While they weren't going to go public with Sergeant Barnes' existence yet, it would be wise to have something set up and ready to go as soon as possible so that they didn't get caught unawares. When she arrived at the tower, she found, rather predictably, Chaos! Everyone seemed to be flying in about a dozen different directions, and no one could seem to get themselves organized. Pepper listened quietly to the ideas flying around for a little bit to make sure no one had thought of anything new since Jarvis's last report. Once assured on that front, she caught the eye of Frigga and Charles and motioned for them to head off to one side. Once there, she nodded respectfully to Frigga. I apologize for the chaos. I hope we're not intruding too much on matters of state back in Asgard, Pepper said. There is little more I can do at the moment, Frigga said. Lord Tyre is in charge of preparing our troops. What else remains to be done is things I cannot do myself, but I trust our people to get them done. All right, I'll try to get this bunch a bit more organized. I don't blame them for being so out of sorts, but they're wasting time that could be put to use, Pepper said. Frigga and Charles both nodded, then the three of them pulled apart. Pepper marched into the middle of the common room and glanced around. Steve, Tony, Thor, and Loki, you need to sit down with Charles and Frigga and talk about what's going on and where, Pepper said. Tony, make sure to ask what their fabrication equipment is like so you'll know if you can make the new arm there or we'll have to make it here. Hank, Cecilia, go pack what you think might be needed for the procedures for Barnes. Loki, before the meeting, we're going to need to borrow you so we can see if Barnes will follow orders we give him. We need to find out if we can get him to eat and drink ASAP. She took a deep breath. 
Natasha, tell Jarvis what you know of the people who trained you in Barnes. He can start hunting them down while we're dealing with other matters. Darcy, thanks for getting everyone to eat. Bobby, you, John, and Rogue can head into the city if you want. Happy will be willing to drive you wherever you want to go if you're not interested in sitting in on what we're going to be doing. She didn't mention that Charles would interrogate Yelena later in the day after the meeting. The kids didn't need to know that, and the adults would know that it would be happening at some point. Steve looked a bit mulish about having to be in a meeting when he wanted to be with Barnes, but Pepper knew his responsible leader side would ensure he did attend. The others she'd named off just sort of looked relieved to have definite orders and plans of action. Pepper had little doubt that they'd have gotten themselves ironed out sooner rather than later, especially Natasha, who seemed to be a great deal like Pepper in some respects. Still, having someone take charge and give the orders, however briefly, had to help a little bit. Especially when there were about ten different things going on at once. Steve followed Loki down to the quarantine lab, not that that surprised Pepper one bit. She was tempted to go take a look herself, but decided she really didn't need any more heartbreak. The one look she'd gotten at Barnes on the Stark pad Steve had been watching over Steve's shoulder was more than enough. That glimpse of Barnes had been more than enough to make her want to go out and kick someone's butt on his behalf. The kids conferred among themselves for a bit and evidently decided that they wanted to go hang out elsewhere in town as they headed for the elevator after they finished talking. Natasha removed herself to a far corner of the room to brief Jarvis. Tony cornered Frigga, probably to find out about how metalworking was done in Asgard since that was a concern separate from the whole, okay, what's going on and where, that the meeting would be about. Thor and Loki sort of drifted that way as well with Charles muttering after them. Pepper was so busy tracking that bunch and the ones that didn't have anywhere specific to go that she almost missed Hank and Cecilia heading out. The atmosphere in the room shifted considerably as folks got down to business. Pepper was tempted to sit in on the meeting, but that was a council of war, not a business meeting, and she didn't really have anything she could contribute. If she wanted to kick butt on the business front, she would have been in the thick of the meeting, but actual war was not her province. After a few moments, she decided to check in on the little knot of Avengers that didn't really have anything to do with the moment. You boys all right? She asked as she got close. Clint gave her a flat look that said, What do you think? Logan just snorted. Remy shrugged and, to his credit, honestly didn't look all that bothered about the situation compared to most of the others. Bruce, at least, was willing to talk. As well as can be. Hulk's been... A little restless, but not in a I-want-out-now sort of way, I don't think. Sometimes it's hard to tell when he's gearing up to break out, Bruce said. Pepper cocked her head. Really? You don't always get advance warning? Bruce shook his head. No. Granted, most of the times I don't get advance warning is because I didn't know someone was about to shoot me or whatever. But there's been a time or two when he tried to get sneaky about breaking out. Which, in hindsight, I should have realized was a sign there was more to him than just rage and smash. Pepper patted him on the arm. Don't be too hard on yourself, Bruce. You were hardly in an ideal situation to investigate Hulk's capabilities until now. Small wonder you never caught on to such things when you had to worry about the general catching up to you. Then she pointed a finger at Clint and Logan. As for you two, don't think I don't know this is bothering you. I'll tell you the same thing I've told Tony on multiple occasions. There is no shame in talking things out when you're upset. It doesn't have to be me or even a mental health professional, but please do talk to someone, all right? And Tony followed that advice, obviously, Clint snarked. Pepper almost rolled her eyes. Of course not, he's Tony, but that doesn't mean you can't follow the advice either. 